This is Story Recapped. Today, I'm going to explain a drama, adventure, sci-fi film called Finch. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. Finch Weinberg sings to himself as he travels across a sandstorm. His weather monitor warns him of high UV radiation, so he proceeds with caution. Finch searches an old supermarket for supplies with his robot companion, Dewey. He finally finds the pet care aisle where he collects dog food. A loud metallic sound makes him jump. He checks and sees that it's just something banging on the shelves due to the wind. He marks the supermarket before making his way to his next destination. Finch drives into the sand-covered city, passing by all the stores and buildings that he marked after scavenging all the supplies inside. His monitor detects a drop in air pressure, so Finch stops. At the end of the road is a large sand cloud pummeling towards him. Finch hurriedly backs his vehicle to escape. He parks by an abandoned facility and collects Dewey, pulling the small robot inside for safety. By the door, Finch struggles to pull Dewey against the wind. He closes the door as soon as both of them are safe. After cleaning himself and Dewey up, Finch heads into the underground laboratory where he used to work as a robotics engineer. There, his beloved dog Goodyear happily greets him. Finch serves the dog food for Goodyear, but the dog whines, worried that Finch doesn't have anything to eat. Finch brushes off the dog's worries but still skips the meal, having only a handful of canned goods in stock. Finch then spends the day listening to records and collecting books from the library. Dewey runs the books into a machine where the book's spines are cut. Afterward, each page is scanned and stored on the computer. As he's getting ready for bed, Finch stares at himself in the mirror, wondering about his doomed condition. That evening, he reads about the effects of radiation exposure. By dawn, Finch is back at work. He fixes up a robot, borrowing parts from Dewey and promising that he'll replace them. After installing the parts, Finch activates the robot and greets it. He tries to get the robot to talk but receives an error message from its software. Goodyear approaches but the robot starts nodding until Finch commands it to stop. Despite some errors in the system, the robot understands him. Finch tweaks the new robot's code, hoping to perfect its communication. The robot's responses are gabbled until it finally repeats what he said. Finch then tests its conversational skills, and the robot gives him animal trivia. Finch asks the robot about itself, and it talks about its four directives. Its fourth directive is to protect Goodyear in Finch's absence, and it overrides all its other directives. The robot asks when Finch will be absent, and before he can respond, the power goes out. Finch heads outside to the wind turbines to restore the power, and and when the robot wakes up, it lets out a curse. In response, Goodyear pees on it. Outside, Finch notices a large storm cloud heading their way. He returns to his laboratory and connects the robot to a local weather station to read its data. The robot forecasts 15 incoming weather events that will arrive within 24 hours. The events will create a superstorm that will last 40 days. Hearing this, Finch goes to his pantry and opens up one of his last canned goods. He takes a bite and savors it for a moment. Then, he plans out where he's going to relocate to to avoid the superstorm. He chooses San Francisco, but Finch's nose starts to bleed while planning the trip. He ignores this and works on the new robot. He speeds up the robot's learning process, focusing on its ability to walk. While the robot continues to practice, Finch stores as many supplies as he can. Seeing that Dewey is still missing its eye lenses, Finch replaces it with the security camera's lenses. Finch loads his supplies on a camper van, but the new robot is too heavy for the steps and too tall for the space. Finch starts the car before the new robot sits down. Once they exit St. Louis, the robot asks where the people are, and Finch replies that it's a long story. Along the way, Finch comments on how the desolate lands used to be covered with life and plants. The robot becomes more curious and humorous during their journey. It looks at postcards while Finch fixes something on its head. The robot quips a joke and fidgets like a child, causing Finch to drop his tools accidentally. Finch fixes the robot but leaves an extra screw in its head, so it jingles inside while it moves. Afterward, Finch takes the robot and teaches it how to scavenge for food for Goodyear. He points out that the ozone layer is damaged due to a solar flare. They enter a theater that hasn't been looted yet and search for supplies. While searching, the robot catches its reflection for the first time. Finch finds unpopped popcorn, but the robot warns that it's 15 years old. Finch laughs as they cook the popcorn on a metal disc, letting it pop for fun. Their fun is halted when the storm cloud closes in. Finch hurriedly drives out of town, but their camper is not fast enough to escape. Instead, he goes out and instructs the robot to help him install metal stakes to hold the van in place during the tornado. The robot hurries him to go inside while it finishes up. Finch secures Goodyear and the windows, then calls for the robot to return, but it's not finished securing the van. The tornado roars in closer and Finch straps himself down. The tornado quickly undoes one of the stakes, causing the van to tumble in mid-air. The camper gets tossed around until the tornado finally passes. Fortunately, everyone is safe. 
Finch checks outside and sees that the only stake that held him in place was the one that the robot installed. He commends the robot while it knocks the loose screw out of itself. To his surprise, the robot can lift the camper, allowing him to replace the tires. When the robot comments that it likes being a tire jack, Finch decides to name it. He suggests Jack, but it considers Jack a tool's name. At night, the robot continues suggesting names of historical figures for itself, but Finch doesn't like them. Finally, the robot suggests, Jeff, and Finch laughs. Finch shakes its hand, finally naming it, Jeff. In the morning, Jeff copies Goodyear's barks, hoping to communicate with the dog. Jeff is concerned that the dog still misunderstands it, thinking that Goodyear's doesn't like it. Finch continues their journey while Jeff awkwardly sits in the passenger seat. It asks Finch what trust is, and he struggles to explain the concept. Instead, Finch tells a story about himself. He used to work at Tri-Alpha Energies and was put on a team that worked on the RMS system. Admittedly, Finch disliked working with a team, stressing that he's better off working alone. During the project, they struggled to get the operating system to communicate with the hardware, and his team believed it was a hardware issue. Finch figured that it wasn't, and he was right. Because of this, the TAE founder praised him for figuring it out on his own. Finch insisted that it was a team effort, but the founder knew he was lying and accepted it anyway. Jeff struggles to understand the point of the story, and Finch stresses that it was about trust. Jeff argues that he didn't trust his team. Their conversation is interrupted by Finch coughing heavily. Finch parks the van and instructs Goodyear and Jeff to stay under the shade while he catches some air. Finch enters an empty diner and vomits blood as he coughs. Upon hearing Goodyear bark, he helps Jeff get the dog to walk with it. Finch orders Jeff to guard the camper while he walks with Goodyear. Disappointed at being left out, Jeff sits on the driver's seat and pretends to drive while playing music. Meanwhile, Finch and Goodyear pretend to order from the diner. Upon hearing the camper move, Finch hurries out and sees that the van is already in an unshaded area. Finch scolds Jeff for attempting to drive when it's not ready, then instructs Jeff to bring out his UV suit so that he can get back in the van. Instead, Jeff drives the van in reverse. Frustrated, Finch orders Jeff to come outside where he shows what direct sunlight does to his skin. He stresses that the sun burns both human skin and dog skin, and he pleads with Jeff to remember that he made it to protect Goodyear. Tearfully, Finch yells at Jeff, then walks away. During their drive, Jeff sits at the back of the van, humiliated. Finch argues that the robot needs to understand how vulnerable they are. To cheer it up, Finch agrees to teach Jeff how to drive. Jeff drives awkwardly at first, worrying both Dewey and Goodyear. Finally, Jeff is able to drive straight and praises itself as being an excellent driver. At night, they set up camp while admiring the Aurora Borealis. Finch ironically thanks the flare that destroyed the ozone for the site. Jeff asks why they don't travel at night if the daylight is dangerous. Finch argues that the night is unpredictable, unlike the daylight, which he can still measure. He warns Jeff that there are still people who hide in the shadows, stressing that it should trust no one. Jeff senses anger in his tone, so Finch calmly lectures that there are things that they can't control, like emotion. What they do defines who they are. On the next day, Jeff finds Finch vomiting. When asked what Jeff can do, Finch sarcastically tells it to call a doctor. Jeff attempts to take care of Finch, but he remains too ill to get out of bed. Jeff drives the rest of the way instead. Upon reaching Denver, Jeff takes Dewey out to scavenge for supplies. The two robots enter a ruined hospital hoping for food and medicine for Finch. When Finch wakes up, he realizes that the robots are gone. He attempts to follow them but feels too weak. Jeff goes on its way, looting for medicine and clothing while Dewey remains downstairs. Finch finally reaches the hospital but his condition makes it difficult to move forward. Dewey reaches for a box of candies while Jeff finds a shelf full of canned goods. When Dewey leans forward, it gets caught in a bear trap. Hearing the sound, Finch finds Dewey, but it's too damaged to fix. Finch regrettably turns the small robot off. Then, he hears Jeff dropping cans upstairs. Finch desperately climbs up and finds Jeff. Finch scolds the robot for not thinking ahead before entering the building, pointing out that it's clearly occupied by other humans. They make their escape as they hear more activity upstairs. The two finally reach the van and drive away, but another car pursues them. Finch instructs Jeff to drive while he prepares. When Jeff attempts to suggest a plan, Finch yells and blames it for Dewey's death. Finch loads a revolver, expecting a fight. At night, Finch realizes that he'd fallen asleep. Behind them, the car continues its pursuit. Finch turns off the headlights, hoping to lose the other car. He then orders Jeff to speed up as they head up the mountain. Seeing an overpass ahead, Finch turns the van onto a dirt road and towards the underpass. Jeff stops the van before they enter the underpass, but Finch insists on hiding, so he pushes the pedal. Jeff tries to tell Finch that the van is too tall, but it's too late. The bridge destroys their solar panels, getting them stuck. While Finch checks on the other car, Jeff heads out. With great effort, Jeff pushes the van to hide under the bridge while the mysterious car closes in. Finally, the car stops just above them, and Finch pulls out his revolver waiting for their pursuer's next move. They listen to the car drive away, and Finch steps outside. Finch sees the damage to his van and loses hope. Too old and too sick to repair things, Finch gives up. 
but Jeff refuses to give up. But Finch rejects its decision since it's only a machine. Jeff dictates that it cannot allow harm to come to a human, but Finch yells at it. With the storm looming close, Finch retreats to his van to rest and be with his dog. Jeff enters and tells Finch that it believes they'll reach the Golden Gate Bridge because it believes in him. Finch responds with the story of how civilization collapsed. The solar flare didn't kill most of the life on Earth, but the humans did it to themselves. There was chaos, with people fighting to survive while the rest hid until there was not enough left for anyone. While scavenging for food, Finch found a mother and a child with a shopping cart full of supplies. The mother instructed her daughter to shoot anyone they saw, making Finch realize that a little girl could kill him. Finch hid as another man threatened the girl to take their supplies. The mother tried to defend her daughter until guns were fired. Finch tried to get to them, but the mother and daughter were already dead, and the man had gotten away with their supplies. Then, Finch heard a whimper from the girl's backpack. There, he found a frightened puppy and named him Goodyear. He believes that while hunger turned most into murderers, it turned him into a coward. With this in mind, he questions how Jeff can believe in him. Jeff continues their journey while Finch remains bedridden. The van reaches San Francisco, and Jeff checks Finch's postcard, learning that it was from Finch's father. While he checks the other postcards, the monitor announces that the UV radiation in the area is non-critical. Jeff is stunned when a butterfly hits the windshield, forcing it to stop. Seeing the dead butterfly, Finch holds his hand up to the sun, and for the first time doesn't get burnt. He steps outside, observing the sunny sky and relishing in the warmth. Jeff and Goodyear follow him outside, and they observe another butterfly landing on Finch's hand. Finch embraces the new hope before them. After driving further into the state, the trio enjoys a picnic under the sun. Jeff shares how he dreamed about them on the Golden Gate Bridge, exciting Finch. Jeff points out how Finch said the postcards were from his uncle, but it says dad on the back. This forces Finch to share about his family. Finch's father left him and his mother when he was a baby. All Finch knew was that his father was an engineer in the army. On his 15th birthday, Finch received a postcard of the Golden Gate Bridge from his father who wished for them to meet one day. Young Finch was excited to meet his father and make him proud, but he never heard from him again. Finch confesses that he didn't get to see the world because he was always busy. Instead, he collected postcards as if to remind himself of his bucket list. He tells Jeff that learning everything about a place is different from actually experiencing being there. The latter is the real human experience. Jeff encourages him to get a move on and experience the Golden Gate Bridge, but Finch reminds him that he's dying. All he cares about is that Jeff takes good care of Goodyear. Later, Finch teaches Jeff how to play fetch with Goodyear. When Goodyear gives him the ball, Finch throws it back to Jeff. Seeing the two play gives him hope that he did the right thing in creating Jeff, though Goodyear still returns the ball to Finch even when Jeff is the one who threw it. Finch encourages Jeff that Goodyear just needs to get used to playing with it. Finch starts coughing blood, ruining the fancy suit that he'd been saving. Jeff helps him back into the van, but Finch instructs him to continue playing while he rests. Finch shakes Jeff's hand, and the robot leans on his shoulder. The two hug, knowing how the inevitable is about to come. Finch climbs into the van and goes to bed. Goodyear joins him to comfort him for as long as he can. Finch continues to scratch Goodyear's head until he can't anymore. Goodyear howls mournfully as his owner passes away. At dusk, Jeff gives Finch a proper funeral. The next day, Goodyear sniffs Finch's bed, missing him. Jeff is left overwhelmed now that it's in charge of keeping Goodyear alive. It thinks of what Finch would do, so it grabs dog food from the pantry and opens it from an automatic can opener on its chest. In the afternoon, Jeff is surprised when Goodyear gives it the ball, eagerly hoping to play fetch with the robot. Jeff picks up the ball and throws it, finally earning the dog's trust. Jeff continues their journey with Goodyear by its side. Finally, they reach the Golden Gate Bridge. Jeff looks at hundreds of photos and letters from survivors hoping to reunite with their loved ones. Jeff adds Finch's postcard after drawing their group on the bridge. And then, the two head out in search of other survivors. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.